Destiny 2's gameplay reveal event occurred yesterday and a lot of information has been dumped. About an hour's worth to be exact. This is my first time covering any Destiny news or content, but as a fan of the series I can say with confidence that I am quite excited for what we have seen so far. As a side note, I was not at the event, so I haven't gotten my hands on the game just yet, but I will certainly be playing in the beta. So without further ado, here's what we learned. The show kicked off with a beautiful cinematic trailer to set the scene, and if you haven't checked it out yet, I've left a link in the description along with all other relevant clips. Right off the bat, Luke Smith discussed Bungie's direction towards a fresh start, and their three main focuses with Destiny 2, story, activities, and community. Starting off, a clip was played of a mission called Homecoming from early on in the campaign. At first, there is a cinematic cutscene of the tower being attacked by Cabal forces, and it all looks very impressive. After seeing the trailers and these cutscenes, it really feels like Bungie has taken some of the criticisms they've received very seriously. It really feels like the story is taking more of a prominent role here. Once that cinematic ended, the gameplay started and things are looking very sharp. The first thing I noticed was how great the tower looks in the new engine. Same with the models, weapons, and animations. The mission is pretty short, but afterwards there is a gameplay Vidoc with lots of details, starting off with how weapons work in Destiny 2. There are no longer just primary, secondary, and heavy slots. Now we have kinetic, elemental, and power, respectively. The way this works is pretty much all primary weapon types from Destiny 1 can either be kinetic or elemental, and you will get to pick and choose how you'd like to play. So where did sidearms, fusion rifles, shotguns, and sniper rifles go? Well, sidearms are in the kinetic elemental section now, and the rest of the secondaries are in the power weapon column now, along with all other heavy weapons from Destiny 1, minus heavy machine guns according to what I've read. This is most certainly to balance out the PvE and PvP problems with some of these weapons from before without completely removing them from the game. And now we get to see the brand new subclasses. For Warlocks, it looks like Sunsinger is being replaced with Dawnblade, a solar sword wielding beast that throws fire blades at enemies. I think a lot of people are happy to see self-resurrection go away as it was sort of a boring mechanic, at least for me, someone who mains a Warlock but I'm also sure some people will be sad to see it go as well. Next up is the Titan, replacing the Defender class with the Sentinel, a Void Shield bearing Captain America type thing? You get a shield and you throw it at enemies, and it bounces between them before flying back to you. Titan bubbles are gone, but certainly not forgotten. It does look like the Striker class does get some sort of shielding for teammates with deployable cover. From what I understand, this cover allows for free reloads when ducking behind it. Last up is the Hunter. This time around, Blade Dancers are turning into... Blade Dancers. No, they're called Arc Striders now, but their super looks pretty comparable to the old one. But instead of flying around with a knife, they have an arc staff and do somersaults around enemies and kill them. And that's all the new subclasses we know about so far. From here, the campaign was discussed a little bit. It's called the Red War and is centered around the Cabal figure named Gaul and his Red Legion, who is upset that the Traveler never chose his race and is taking it for himself and destroying the last city in the process. Of course, the player's goal is to fight back against the Force and destroy the Red Legion, and try and reclaim the light. A new strike was also mentioned and was playable at the event, and it's called the Inverted Spire. It is a Vex-themed strike that takes place on Nessus, a planet which I'll get to in a little bit. The strike, however, has a three-phase boss similar to the Fallen Saber strike from the Taken King, and there are some gameplay videos out there of the strike in its entirety if you're interested. The Crucible is now new and improved. All game types will be four versus four, which I assume is to bring the focus to a more cooperative experience and to encourage team play. Along with that, there are new HUD elements that will show super status, ammo pickups, and when supers are used and by who. Of course, since this is an entirely new entry in the series, there are brand new PvP maps and a new game type called Countdown, which is similar to Elimination with attack and defend elements. Immediately following that, there was confirmation of a new raid. But that's all the info we're getting right now. It exists. And now on to what I would consider to be one of the most important changes to Destiny, and that's the exploration. In Destiny 1, all we had to do on a planet when flying there was patrol missions and public events. In Destiny 2, there is much more planned. Players will still be able to patrol and participate in public events, 
but now there are adventures in lost sectors. Adventures, as they were described, are side quests given out by NPCs in the world, and lost sectors sound like dungeons where players will be able to fight a big boss, get a key, and open a loot chest with that key. What makes these additions so welcome, besides just more stuff to do, is that any activity can be launched from the directory at any time, anywhere. No more going to orbit to start a strike, mission, or fly to another planet. It's all been completely streamlined, and I know for a fact that's going to make people very happy. The way this is all possible is with the new map added to the directory. All activities will be posted on the map and will have live info about everything going on in the world. And speaking of worlds and planets, there are four planets to explore in Destiny 2. Earth, Nessus, Titan, and Io. Starting with Earth, we will be exploring the European Dead Zone. Finally, Nessus is a Vex-occupied planetoid in Red Legion territory. Titan will be one of Saturn's moons and is an oceanic area with an old Golden Age utopia on it. And lastly, Io is a sulfuric yellow moon of Jupiter and also, very interestingly, the previous host of The Traveler. One of the last major focuses in this keynote was on community and clans, and yes, Clans will have official features in-game this time around, such as rewards, in-game rosters, custom banners, and fire team building tools. There wasn't much focus on this other part, but when players are in activities, they are working towards rewards for the rest of their clan, despite who is and isn't playing. One of the most interesting new clan-focused features is called Gilded Games, a way for clans and solo players to meet up and play challenging activities together. Essentially, it is a matchmaking hopper for solo players to jump into and see if any clans are asking for people to join and play. If this works well, it will be the long-awaited answer for LFG and matchmaking because theoretically, it will be a completely voluntary decision on either end for joining and inviting random people, but only time will tell if this feature works out well. The last major bombshell and a question on many people's minds was, what service will Destiny 2 be hosted on for PC? Well, I'm pretty excited to say that Destiny 2 will be hosted on the Blizzard app. But no, that does not mean Blizzard has anything to do with the development of the game. And I know a lot of people are wondering this as well. The PC version of the game currently supports up to 4K resolution, no cap on frame rate, and up to 21 by 9 aspect ratios for those of you with ultra-wide monitors. It's also likely that the PC version is releasing at a later date than the console versions, though hopefully m maybe a week or two past. We'll have to see for that. And that's all I have for today. I'm looking to do some more coverage of Destiny 2 throughout E3, beta, and launch, and I also have some other videos cooking up. But for now, I'm beyond excited for Destiny 2 and cannot wait to get my hands on it. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments or if I got anything wrong. Thumbs up is always appreciated. Peace.